Let's talk health. The Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria says millions of Nigerians, especially those in rural communities, lack access to quality eye care services. President of the Society, Abiola Oyeleye, said this at the 48th Scientific Conference of the Society held in Enugu with the theme, The Evolving Face of Ophthalmology. Senior reporter Bamidele Ajayi has more. Global estimates of visual impairment have been on the rise over the years. In 1990, it was estimated that about 148 million people had visual impairment, with 38 million people going blind by 2002. The estimate of the visual impairment increased to 161 million, with 37 million blindness. Twelve years later, the World Health Organization estimated that 285 billion people were visually impaired where 39 million people got blind and 246 million people had low vision, with about 90% of those visually impaired living in developing countries. At this 48th scientific conference, participants are deliberating on the way out of the challenge while also providing solutions to eye care services. The national president of the association is opening up by saying that Nigeria with a population of over 200 million people, only has about 700 optometrists attending to the eye care needs of the citizens. Uh, we do a lot of surgical things, camps and everything to raise the profile, not just of the society, but also to make sure we make a difference to people's lives. The local organizing chairman of the conference explained that the team intend to scale up optometric practice in the country with the current realities in technological advancement. Important at this point to note that the Southeast geopolitical zone was, has been noted to have the highest prevalence of low vision in the country. The local state government has continued to invest in health sector for better service delivery. The government also and back on the construction of a two-city bed ultramodal quaternary health facility to be named as the Enugu International Hospital. It will create opportunity for a lot of specialist areas that you usually will not find in this region to be in Enugu State fully equipped. High point of the event was induction of 34 graduates from the West Africa College of Surgeon and the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria into the Optometric Society of Nigeria. Bamedili Ajayi. TVC News, Enugu. Away from that, the Office of the First Lady in Kebe State under the Nasara Foundation, in partnership with the Tosi Chanrai Foundation India, organized a free medical outreach for the benefits of the local community in Kalgo local government. The outreach program seeks to provide comprehensive medical care, including eye surgery, distribution of glasses, and provision of medication to the 1,500 underserved population in Kebi State. Hawa Mohammed reports. The wife of Kebi State Deputy Governor, Mariam Abubakar Tafida, who represented the First Lady, Zainab Nasser, talked about the benefits of the program. So the essence of this outreach is to help the people that cannot afford to get treated or to, or to go for a surgery. That's why she's giving out this free medical surgeries and medications and glasses. Abdul Rashid Bala, Chairman Coordinator, Nasara Foundation, highlighted the impacts of the outreach, which will cover 500 eye surgeries to be performed by a team of expert surgeons from India with 1,000 pairs of glasses to be distributed to patients with visual impairments. Medications were also provided to patients with various medical conditions. Uh, uh, we're expecting uh, to treat uh, 1,500 patients, inshallah, which uh, uh, 500 patients will undergo surgery, that's Qatar surgery. Uh, the remaining 1,000 will either get medical glasses or medication for their... Speaking at the event, the chairman to Sleep Foundation pointed out the successful collaboration between the First Lady's Office and the Tulsi Chanrai Foundation, demonstrating a shared commitment to improving the health care and well-being of the people in Kebbi State. The Commissioner of Health, Yunusa Musa Ismail, and the member House Committee on Health, Kebbi State, Babengida Uma Gulumbi, commended the administration in Kebbi State 
and its commitment to supporting healthcare development in the state. Uh, the philanthropist uh, issue of uh, Her Excellency, which has been continuously assisting the people of Kebbi State to the extent this, I think, is the first time I'm witnessing the outreach of eye surgery. She is uh, taking responsibility of it. It's a commendable effort, and I would also like to commend uh, achievements or the support of Chan Rai Foundation. They are also doing a great job. I think this is the first, uh, fourth time I'm, I'm uh, attending this kind of program. The free medication will go a long way to the fry the cost of medicines and also enhance access to affordable health care delivery. And I'm grateful for the glasses and for the outreach that the wife of the executive governor of Kebbi State is doing. We really appreciate her effort. Hawa Muhammad, CVC News, Brennan Kebbi. Away from that, the Kano Young Scholars Without Borders has commended the lawmaker representing Beachy Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, Abubakar Beachy, for his exceptional leadership and commitment to the welfare of his constituents, particularly the youth. In a statement signed by its president, Bala Bilu, the group praised the lawmaker for his recent increase in regular grants to students at the secondary schools of science and technology in Kano State. Mr. Bello said this demonstrates his commitment to supporting the education and development of young people in his constituency. He also acknowledged Mr. Beach's numerous initiatives and programs aimed at uplifting the youth, which have positively impacted many lives. He noted that the lawmaker's influence as the chairman of the House Committee on Appropriations has been instrumental in ensuring that the needs of his constituents are reflected in the national budget. Now, the National Orientation Agency is driving a nationwide birth registration social mobilization between September and November of this year. The exercise is to help government in policy and decision-making process for Nigerians. Rafiu Hamid has details. Children on the African continent have the lowest birth registration rate in the world, with only 44% registered at birth. Of this figure... Nigeria alone accounts for 11% of the unregistered children in West Africa. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the current birth rate in the country is 35.683 per thousand people. More than 50% of these births of children under five remain unregistered. This press conference by the National Orientation Agency is to launch a nationwide birth registration social mobilization drive aimed at ensuring that every child in Nigeria has access to education, health care, and other essential services. It was put in place in collaboration with the State Primary Health Care Board, National Population Commission, National Identity Management Commission, and UNICEF. Birth registration is a fundamental right of every child, and this initiative seeks to highlight this importance to the child, the family, the community, and the nation at large. Bank registration is the first legal acknowledgement of a child's existence and is essential for safeguarding their rights and privileges for now and in the future. The drive is focused on registering all children under five and provide them with NIN free of charge. They are people of age as we are gathered here that have no register for NIN. And if you agree with me, you discover that you can hardly do anything in Nigeria now without making use of your NIN. They also blamed parents for negligence. Imagine a child of 13 years old going to the high court and say they want to do Abidavit. Why don't you go for the birth certificate? So please, this is a forum from this press release that we should know how important birth registration is. Some parents believe that their duty is just to procreate, no need to get the vital documents for them. While acknowledging that child delivery at churches and traditional birth attendance homes contributes to the challenge of non-registration of children at birth, the agencies call for support of parents and guardians. Rafiu Hamid, TVC News, Ushugu. 
Now to another story. Members of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengasan, have picketed an energy company in Lagos. The workers are protesting against alleged anti-labor practices by the company. Senior correspondent Sharon Ijasson has details in this report and will return with business news. In the early hours of the day, oil workers prevented members of staff of Nikonde Energy from gaining entrance into its office in Victoria Island, Lagos. About 10 years now, we've been trying to engage the company to put up a CBA because we, are, with both the labor and the management, we come together and this condition of service is a given in any industry. And uh, they've been evasive, you know, they keep posting us, they've refused to do that. So that is why we are here today. So what it means is that, yes, can it be avoided? If they had agreed and we have this uh, document, working document, which is collective bargain agreement, we wouldn't have been here today, under the sun, but we don't mind. Some of their grievances are non-implementation of collective bargaining agreement, non-remittance of pension deducted from workers' salary, lack of promotion for workers, failure to allow workers to unionize, among others. Several of our uh, uh, conversations by our president, uh, Kobrefes Susifo, and other structures of the association. Our desire is to make sure that it, it, the rights of people by law are instituted and people get their due you know what is due to them and the union has a lot of value to the industry it was courtesy of the union that cash core is no longer a prayer point in the nigerian oil and gas before now it used to be a prayer point with the active participation and involvement of the union pia become a reality with the active participation of the union critical position that IOC is used to occupy by their expert, Nigerians are not the one occupying it. The workers and management of Nikonde signed a communique affirming that a new collective bargaining agreement will be reached within 21 working days. Labor leaders here want organizations to allow their workers to unionize as it is a right and not a privilege. Sharon Jason, TVC News.